culture. His interests are movies, football, cooking, and also serving food. <laughs> he joined AN Toastmaster in September 2003. I, 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 like, I would like to welcome Toastmaster Vijaya. Toastmaster Vijaya is the boss, the source, is the boss, the source. Toastmaster Vijaya. Oh, thank you. Grandiosity, micromanagement, disrespectful, bossy, or maybe supportive. Does any of these words resonate you? Any of you? Today, I'm trying to describe my journey as a work. Dear presiding officer, fellow Toastmasters, dear guests. Today, I am trying to explain my journey of career different kind of boss I met. First of all, let me give you some insight of beautiful moments I had with my boss. When I was in Thailand, I did my first official job in Thailand. During that time, it was very good. When I met my boss for the first time, I was in my grounds band. And she told me that when you are coming to the office, please wear a formal pants. From that day onwards, on holidays also, if she calls me, <laughs> I wore a formal pants. <laughs> because my boss told me, boss is boss. always right. <laughs> right. So that's the thing I did. My boss was so nice, she taught me so many things. She took me under her wing. She managed me, she taught me so many different ki kind of new things that I had to deal. For example, politically, how do we make things correct? or maybe we have to learn how to respect or maybe understand the culture of different country. She, she taught me everything. Slowly with this learning, I felt that I was very worried about disappointing her. I was not scared anymore because she loved me. Even one, of, what, even one time she fought with head of the company and said that if you are not extending the contract with this guy, we are not working at all with you to the head of the company. That was the time I was like, wow, this is the kind of boss I want to be one of. I was so happy. But these are the things which were the beautiful things of my life. But life is not a bed of roses here. When I came back to Nepal, life was different. I tried the same thing, I wanted to be again the most important guy in the team. I tried to support everybody, but thing was different here. I tried to learn, I tried to make things simpler or read more, but I could not manage this, this thing here. The thing in Nepal, the, the place where I worked was a very ambitious project, and I wanted to make a mark on that one. I tried to understand what they wanted, but all the time, my boss, the real boss, said that I was not good enough. But I understood, okay, maybe I was not here in Nepal for pretty long, for six to seven years, I understood that maybe I was not, not up to the mark, not updated, but I never, never thought that I was not up to the mark. I tried to understand the thing, how the system works. I talked with my friends, I talked with my seniors, or whoever could help me. He never appreciated what I did. He constantly said that the thing you are saying is not enough. The thing you are doing is not enough. Constantly tarnished my confidence. But of all those things, I'm a fighter. I kept on reading. I kept on trying to understand new things. I, I researched so many things. I, I gathered the evidence and went to him. He, he was never satisfied. Never. <coughs> I could not satisfy him. One day, when I was in his cabin, he was with his guest. And I also what happened to be in, in, the, in the office, in his cabin, and I told him what are the things he asked me to work, and I, I explained everything. And he scolded me in front of guests. That day I felt 
this is not what I wanted in my life. After having so beautiful life back in Thailand, when I came back with all the plethora of energy, I could not manage this thing. I told my wife that I want to quit. This is not, not the thing I wanted to do in my life. I told my wife after that, I took my decision and I like, took a little bit of time and then I was thinking and staring at the walls, sometimes ceilings. I was lost. I was shattered. My confidence was so low and I decided I will go and talk to him and say that I will quit. <laughs> I went to him, wrote an application and told him that I will quit. I didn't have any conflict. I just said that maybe the job is not for me. I wanted to quit. I left the office. The situation between Thailand, where I had an empowering experience, where I was, I was always pampered sometimes. I was, I was supported all the time. And the situation in Nepal was like, it was tarnishing, detrimental. It's like, I didn't want to be in this situation. When we see this kind of situation, it's not about working on it, it's about respecting somebody. We are, after all, they're just for the job. We are doing something for the betterment of humanitarian cause, but we are not here for the cause of getting tarnished all the time where you don't want to speak to anybody. Maybe these are the things I resonate, where some, some, something that I do not resonate, that's why I quit. So today, I would like to express that if your boss is somebody who is like always looking you down, always tarnishing you, always saying something bad upon you, then you should be thinking that maybe your boss is not the right one. Maybe you should say, quit. Don't be scared to quit. And I did. That's the story I would like to say. Thank you. <laughs>